this is really a metaphysics, which I don't think people... God, this phone is driving me crazy. I'm going to turn this damn phone off. Um, sorry. The distinction between cosmology, C-O-S... O M O L O G Y. I think that's what I write in C O S O Cosmog C O S. Oh, I can't spell. I'm sorry. And I don't think I have Cosmog in here. C O S. Yeah. M. C O S M O L O G Y. Cosmology. Yeah. C O S M O G O N Y. Cosmology and cosmogony. A cosmogony is a description of, if I spelled it right, a cosmogony is a description of the origin of the world. A cosmology is a description of the nature. Obviously, a cosmogony precedes a cosmology. A cosmology comes after a cosmogony. You have your cosmogony first, and then we can talk about our cosmology. You have to have the origin of the world before you can talk about the nature of the world, right? So the cosmogony comes before the cosmo cosmology. The word I can't say, cosmogonical, whatever. Um, I'll just say cosmogony. As these values um, have been challenged over time, that is, cosmo cosmogony uh, and the values of a divine command theory collapses, the world seems meaningless. Okay, let me try to make an explanation. If I'm talking about uh, a cosmogony, the origin of the world, and we recognize that for the theist, the origin of the world is in the beginning. If we recognize for the theist, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God, blah, 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 logos, right? It's, in, um, it's called logos, L-O-G-O-S, right? So the word logos was God. Um, and there's tons of stuff that can be, you know, unearthed that, but I'm not going to get into that. We recognize that our cosmogony starts with an utterance, if you will, if you really want to get deep, right? Uh, our cosmogony begins with the word, right? Semiotics would go crazy at this point, right? You could just do, break off into a whole lecture on just, a whole huge lecture on just that concept, right? But of, according to the Christian um, moral ethic, in the beginning was the word. Right, in the beginning was, was the utterance. It's that word that set everything into motion. Um, what that word is is beyond all of us, right? But there was the word, and, uh, at least it's beyond me. Um, so we have an understanding of the word. That word, that beginning, established the, and posited what we ought to be doing. Right? What we ought to be doing as an absolute truth. Here's where you need to go. Here's the direction for salvation, for, for life living, for happiness, for whatever, right? And here are the codified rules in which you arrive at this. Do this, do this, don't do this, don't do this, and da, da, da. this becomes sort of the demand. Right? I'm not saying this is a bad or a good thing, this is Nietzsche's interpretation, right? So I posit what you ought to do, but I recognize insofar as I posit what you ought to do, I need to tell you how you get there. You get there by doing what I say, right? This becomes the demand, right? That demand uh, you know, it robs us of our existence, according um, to Nietzsche. And what ends up happening, and this is what he says, um, this is what he says here, is that um, the world then becomes meaningless, right? And the, the question is, well, why, why does it become meaningless, right? For Nietzsche, it's important. Um, this this transitional phase phase is uh, note seven between page ten and eleven. I now have a belief according to Nietzsche, in a God, right? I now have faith, I have belief in a God that has posited something for me, one example being absolute truth. This, as just one example, becomes the highest value with respect to truth, but insofar as I attain it, everything collapses, as I gave instances in two different movies. The whole world collapses, right? And all I get in return is demands on what I ought to be doing. If that's the case, if this is how everything was built, if the origin of the universe is built in this fundamental, metaphysical um, inability to recognize my existence, then 
my existence becomes totally meaningless, right? My existence is meaningless. Nietzsche does not say that your existence is meaningless. A lot of people misunderstand this, right? He's not saying that you're missing your, your existence is meaningless. That's categorically false. What he's saying is it's a, it's a conditional. If you ascribe to this view, then it is arguably the case that you are warranted in saying that your existence is meaningless. Why? Because the thing that you're striving for, if everyone were to strive for it, would collapse in on itself, right? Right? We would have truthfulness, but there, it would be chaotic. There'd be way more violence, there'd be way more death, there'd be way more murder, um, and that... Uh, come, 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 do not. Sorry, I can't, give, give me like five minutes. Okay. On my door, it says, do not disturb filming. <laughs> so when you knock, and it says do not disturb filming, it interrupts my logic, it interrupts my thought. Today has been uh, an, 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 a, a, a non-stop interruption today. I apologize, you too. <laughs> Let's wrap this up, Jason. Okay, so basically, you get the idea, right? What is the case? What ought to be the case? Absolute truth isn't uh, attainable as just one example. We haven't really fleshed out everything else. Um, what we are aspiring for collapses, and all we get are things that we have to do. <sighs> Lastly, and then I'll wrap it up because obviously everybody else needs my time. Um, divine Command Theory. Um, watch my discussion on the Divine Command Theory. I've, um, I've embedded a link. Watch the videos. I think it's very important that you watch it. The idea of why it becomes meaningless is simple. And I'll say it because even this might be complicated. So I'm going to get real, real basic. The Divine Command Theory says that an action is right because God commanded it. God commands actions only because it's right. right? So God says, listen, because I commanded it, my commanding it makes it right. Well, we see immediately that God can command contrary commands. Thou shalt not kill, but Abraham should kill um, his son. I, f I think it's Isaac, right? So Abraham can kill Isaac. So you can't kill, but Abraham can kill. So, which is right. You don't know. It becomes meaningless because I don't have access to God's knowledge, and thus everything collapses. This gives sense to this meaninglessness in existence because what he's attacking, Nietzsche is attacking at this point, is sort of this di divine command theory of God, right? If we ascribe to a divine command theory and what we get are the commandments of God, then my existence in this world becomes meaningless insofar as I don't have access, cognitive access, to what his commands are and God can command contrary things. He can say that thou shalt not murder on the one hand, but excuse murder for some on the other. I can't make sense of that, right? I don't know. I just, I, I guess, I gotta just wait for the command. Um, for Nietzsche, this is, um, this is unacceptable, and obviously the highest value then collapses in on itself, um, and the collapse specifically at that point with respect to the commandment, "Thou shalt not kill," is contradiction, right? The collapse is a, a collapse into contradiction, into absurdity, because we don't have the cognitive accessibility to do, um, to, to figure out what God wants us to do. I apologize for how that ended, you know, clearly, I need to wrap this up because uh, <laughs> I got other things I guess I got to do. Um, I'm going to, I'm, you know, again, I'm not trying to make light of it, but seriously, it's a lot of other obligations I got. I'm going to start shooting the videos either really super early in the morning or really, really super late at night. I'll start coming here after the building closes or something um, so I can be uninterrupted. Um, but I, you, get the, you get the point, right? First seven notes. First seven notes. All of this stuff, first seven notes. Uh, I'm excited, uh, and hopefully you are as excited as I am. Uh, I will continue the video series until, until I can't do it anymore, or, or I won't. Um, with that, thanks for taking the time to watch my videos. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Have a good day.